Education agencies have an immense responsibility for overseeing the data they collect. Education data encompasses thousands of privacy-protected data elements that flow to and from various systems, including schools, districts, colleges, universities, and programs, all in a secure environment. It stands to reason that the meaning of certain data could get lost or misinterpreted if there isn't solid documentation to support it. If you find yourself in this situation, there is a solution. It's called a data dictionary, and the Common Education Data Standards, or CEDS, provides the tools you need to create one. Meet Lucy. Lucy is a data analyst for the Department of Education. In addition to the bazillion other tasks assigned to her, she is charged with responding to data requests and creating data dictionaries for the state's longitudinal data system. Unfortunately, documentation around the state's data systems is either non-existent or incomplete, and what is available is scattered between the various entities that collect, store, and use data in the agency. On a positive note, the Department of Education is adopting the CEDS standards, and Lucy has been trained to support this endeavor, so she feels confident that help is not far away if she needs it. Lucy has a problem. Not only is it Monday morning, but she has two new data requests sitting on her desk, one requesting information about homeless student enrollment and another wanting the number of students who exited special education. She still has not responded to the two from last week because the individual who is responsible for that data is on vacation. How is she going to respond to all these requests without documentation to support her analysis? Four cups of coffee later, the neurons in Lucy's brain have begun to fire and she reflects on CEDS and the training she attended a few weeks ago. There are tools in CEDS that were designed specifically to help users like her solve problems like this. This is what she knows. Identifying data elements is a necessary component of responding to data requests. Identifying data elements, option sets, and definitions is a necessary component of creating data dictionaries. One way to build a data dictionary from scratch is to use the CEDS Connect tool and build a connection. And connections include analysis and data elements, both of which she needs to pull the data together for the data request. It has not escaped Lucy's attention that this dilemma has provided the perfect opportunity for her to kill two birds with one stone, create the data dictionaries, and fulfill the data requests. Lucy would never actually throw a stone at a bird. 90% of what she needs is available in CEDS, and the other 10% resides in the heads of her colleagues, or random documentation scattered throughout the Department of Education. She makes a list of what she needs to do. First, build two connections in CEDS, one for each data request. This will provide her with a master list of elements. Second, look up the definitions for the elements in CEDS. She will be able to find both the CEDS element definitions as well as definitions from how other states have defined those same elements. She can use this as a starting point when conferring with colleagues on how the Department of Education will want to define the data. And third, create the data dictionaries in CEDS. To complete the first step, Lucy signs on to CEDS and accesses the Connect module. Before she begins building her connections, she refreshes her memory by reviewing the tutorials on how to build a connection. Then she builds two connections, the Department of Education 2016 Homeless Student Enrollment and the Department of Education Students Exiting Special Education School Year 2014. Great, that's done. Now she needs a master list of elements. The connection module includes a report that uses her own connections to generate a list of elements. It is called Select Connections, See Elements Report. From the Reports and Analysis section in Connect, she runs the Select Connections, See Elements Report. Although she can choose many connections, she only needs the two that she built, so she selects them and generates the report. The information displays as a table and includes all the elements she used in her connections. Lucy now has her master list of elements. From this same view, she can drill down on each element to see its definitions and option sets. She can use this information to see how they might apply to her own data systems. She could even select connections other than hers to see how they compare. Now that she has a comprehensive list of elements for her data dictionaries, she wants to gather more information 
before presenting them to her colleagues for review. A lot of the Department of Education data is without documentation, so instead of presenting a list of elements with blank definitions, she wants to see how other states have defined those same elements and option sets in comparison with CEDS. If any of them reflect similarities to their own data, she can include that information as a starting point for the discussion. She reflects again to the training and something about an element impact analysis report in a line. She reviews the available reports and finds the Create Element-Based Report. It is described as letting users see how their data aligns with CEDS and others in the field. This is another report that will help her get the information she needs. Lucy is becoming more comfortable with the CEDS structure and the tools, so she decides to run this report without reviewing the tutorial. She opens a line and selects the Explore Maps Create Element-Based Report, chooses the same elements she used in her connections, clicks Next, and voila! She has a list of maps that have aligned to the same elements she used in her connection. The report is rather large, so she downloads it as an Excel spreadsheet in order to filter and sort, making it easier for her to determine which maps relate more closely with the elements she identified in her connections. Once she has chosen the maps she wants to review, she selects Align again, and this time chooses a map-based report. Based on the results from the Element Impact Analysis report, she selects three maps that appear to be closely related to the data elements she used in her connections. She decides to run the Data Dictionary Only report to find out how others have defined the elements within their own systems and what option sets they used. She drills down to the details to see if there is additional information that can help her determine if any of the definitions might be applicable to the definitions that are missing from their own data collection system and applies any that make sense. Lucy is confident that she has enough information to bring others into the conversation. She calls a meeting of the data stewards and other personnel from the various programs who are responsible for the data. These are the people familiar with the business rules for the data so they are key to determining the appropriate definitions and option sets. The meeting is productive and results in a complete set of definitions and code sets. Lucy completes the data requests and turns them over to the Data Review Board, who will ensure compliance with data privacy requirements. Now she is ready to create the data dictionaries. Because of the work that she has already done, Lucy has all the information she needs for her data dictionaries, the data elements, definitions, and option sets have been identified, as well as the systems to which they belong, so all that is left to do is load the data in CEDS, align to the CEDS elements, and publish the maps. Now Lucy has the knowledge she needs to continue building the data dictionaries for her state's longitudinal data system, and she's beginning to see the value CEDS can have in effectively managing their data. Find out more about how CEDS can help you by going to ceds.ed.gov and explore the standard and join the community at ceds.grads360.org.